Whoa, god damn it. What's the matter, man? Do you want to live outside? What? What is it? You can't live outside. What are you so worked up about? No, 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 Sam. What? What's going on? Buster, Buster, come here, bud. Hi, buddy. Hi, Boosty. What's up, Booster? What's up, Booster? Booster. Booster. What's up, buddy? What's up, Buster? What's up, Buster? What's up, Buster? Buster. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Hey, Buster. Come on, what's the matter? What's the matter? Come on, bud. What are you doing? What are you, dude? Buster, come here. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. What's up? Flop it! Good job. What's up, pal? What's up? Ooh, fl flip too, huh? Little rollover business? Huh, shiny guy? Okay. Hello. I like the new pouncing thing. How can we make you pounce? It's, it's a funny thing. What's, who's yelling? What time is it? What's up? How's it going? Quick one, just a quick one, man. Just a quick one. What's up? Do you want to try to eat now, Buster, or what? No one was eating much before. Are you hungry now? No? Here, here. It's the same food, dude. It's the same food every day. Where's my comb? That's the big question. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Too close? Use whatever options you have at your disposal to maintain your sanity. All right. Uh, Ellen Burstyn is on the show today, and I would listen to it if I were you. It's pretty. Pretty great. All right. Where's the comb I like? Um, so, I guess there's been a lot going on. I don't know, a lot of comedy. That's been going good, I'm all worked up. There's a crew shooting a documentary on me for some reason. I don't know. Well, ah, here it is. On me for some reason, which is fine. He's been bothering me for a while. And it's just like, all right, do it. That's why I said, he said, can we shoot a documentary on you? Trying to build this new hour post pandemic, post, you know, Lynn's death. And like, if I don't have to be involved that much, Right? That makes sense. Yeah, you can do a documentary on me. Just don't, don't involve me too much. So, all right, do I need anything in here? No. Um, why don't we do... No, Glow is not going to do 
another season. Old news. Um, so what we'll do is we'll pick a letter. Where's my coffee? Um, these are whatever options you have at your disposal to maintain your sanity without hurting yourself or others. Got to refill that hummingbird theater. Theater. Hummingbird theater. That's a good name for a theater. Hummingbird theater. That must exist, right? Where are you doing your show? Uh, we're down at the Hummingbird Theater. Oh, is that that little black box theater? Uh, sort of downtown? Yeah. Yeah, I saw a, uh, uh, a version of Oedipus there done only with sock puppets. Did you see, did you see the sock puppet Oedipus? That was at the Hummingbird? Are, are you sure that wasn't at the um, Fodge? Theater, the Fodge. Where is that? Oh, that's not around anymore. That was in, that was in the front of that guy's house. The Fodge Theater. Yeah, it was like a house, but it wasn't a house. No, I, I think the I think the sock puppet Oedipus was at uh, was at Hummingbird. Oh, maybe you're right. Does Seth still run things down there? Oh no, you didn't hear, Seth lost most of his toes and is now a um, an advocate for for people for toeless people no he didn't know that he's actually doing a show on it but not at the hummingbird it's sort of a big deal in that community a, a, a show about losing his toes yeah yeah how do you lose his toes he was you know he didn't have the right socks on and he um he, uh, you know, he was he was out hiking, and no one really knows, because he wasn't that stable anyway. Some people think see, that he cut off his own toes, you know, just to you know get sympathy, maybe write the show. Um, did I just have my coffee mug in my hand? Uh. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do right now. What time is it? 8.14. Um, I, got a, I got a fairly big day. Gonna work out here in a minute. Brendan's out here for a week. I had to do some pretty specific research uh, for today. Hey, pal. You all right, Buster? Comedy story vibe is great. Comedy story's been great. Um... Time of day am I writing new material? On stage? All day? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick um that movie's a masterpiece, by the way, and I've watched it three times. And it keeps getting better every time. It's definitely his best movie. It's definitely his Love letter, farewell, homage to Hollywood. I Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick a, uh, a letter, and then I'm just going to find a record that I don't think is going to be um, fucked with. All right, G is close. Let's try that. And then we're out. All these dumb Peter Gabriel records that people made me get. 
I guess it's going to be a, an album that I don't think can be fucked with that I want to hear. This is a weird record. Yeah. I've done that one so many times. Go to Blazes. What is this? This is like an old uh, Texas record, maybe. I know this guy, this guy right here. He's a Houston guy, but I don't know. I'm damaging them? Shut the fuck up. Don't worry about my records. I'll worry about my records. All right. Give a fuck if I'm damaging the records. Records are to be played, not to be. None of it's gonna matter when you die. None of it's gonna matter when you die. None of it's gonna matter when you die. What is it with people? People just want to be in other people's business because they think they know, they're right, they've got the information. Last wording, motherfuckers. Drunk and alone. Television's on. The bottles on the top. Waiting for you. Waiting for you. Waiting for you. Sounds like the Del Fuegos. Everything sounded like this at this time. I think one of those guys, that Heyman guy, has got a solo record or two out. I think he might be an Austin guy now. I'm not completely sh completely sure, but I think his brother sent me this record and his new record for me to hear it and maybe talk to the guy years ago. I don't know how he's doing now, that Heyman fella. Does anyone know Heyman? What comedian is really elevated since the comedy store reopened? Shut the fuck up with this fucking pecking order garbage. Why are all of you idiots sold on this idea that there's like gotta be this alpha dominating fucking paradigm? What's happening at the comedy store is a lot of people that weren't getting good spots, you know, before and were sort of on the periphery of, of what was happening there before when it was just this stupid, you know, swinging dick alpha clusterfuck are now coming in and doing their spots and working on material. It's a showcase club, which means, you know, you see several comics a night all doing the same amount of time, working on their shit. There's no winning. Stop with the fucking dumb winning conversation. The stupid competitive nature of like projecting that shit onto comedy. You know, just pick a comic you like and dig it, man. This is not a fucking sport, stupid. 
There's no fucking alpha beta situation at the goddamn comedy store. It's one comic after another. The only person that has power was uh, good to hear. Then, then don't bring it up like that. You're just asking in general. That's not a general question. That's a who's winning at the comedy store. You'll know who's fucking winning in show business because it's show business and they'll be sent up the fucking ladder and they'll be all up in your ass. But the fucking grassroots part of it is just, you know, we're just doing the work over there. There's a lot of funny people around. Comedy is a subjective trip. It's like, you know, all these dummies have put this goddamn sports mentality onto this and this is tribal mentality and this kind of comedy or that kind of comedy. It's just like, shut the fuck up. Don't you have better things to do? Just fucking, you know, enjoy the comedy you like and fuck the rest. It's not, a, it's, like, it's not team sport. Jesus Christ. So sick of this fucking culture. Fucking people. It's not even an art form. It's just a fucking... It's just comedy, man. I don't know what Dynasty's like. I do know... Maybe I need a career change. I love what I do. Maybe you need a fucking career change. Is anyone making me laugh? Yeah, Fahim Anwar makes me laugh. Uh, Fahim's been, he's funny. And who else have I been watching over there? There's literally people there where I'm like, were you always here? Um, all right, I'm gonna work out in a minute. Uh, don't misunderstand, you know, the drop into that tone, like I'm fine. And I'm not worked up. It's just, uh, you know, there are certain things that I have evolving feelings about, and that is people making everything some sort of win or lose proposition or some sort of, you know, tribal event or some sort of like, uh, kind of like climb Everest, sort of like who wins this or that. It's just stupid. I mean, it's like, how does competition even apply to, uh, like, if you look at things like their sporting events, it's like, what an empty fucking life you have. Some comics look at it as art. Some comics just look at it as comedy, as entertainment. Like, I'm here to do this to make you laugh and get out. I'm here to do this to get deep or whatever. It's up to, see, that's the thing that people forget about comics is that we're all a bunch of fucking social morons in a lot of ways. And we got into it to, you know, kind of row our own boat, do our own thing because we didn't fit into the regular structure of things. You know, at some point people just expected comics were just like regular people or that they all hung out together or that there were teams. I mean, I guess improv is like that, but those people came along and kind of did the collaborative thing. That was not the stand up thing. Uh, comedy is a job. Is Eliza still being competitive? I think Eliza is competitive by nature. But I mean, I don't know that that's a fine line between competitive and ambitious. Do you know what I mean? In this game. When you come to New York City, you have to come check out the Wacky Shack. It's a stand-up shack in Bushwick attached to a bodega. I can like 98.9% tell you that that probably won't happen.
Comedy's not really an emotional outlet. It's just people telling jokes. Um, okay. I'm going to uh, work out and get ready for this big interview today. Ellen Burstyn is on the show. Um, it's very good. Uh, I uh, apologize uh, if I abruptly projected tone or intent onto uh, anybody's screen name or comment. I'm not going to Australia. That foreign fucking quarantine in Australia is ridiculous. I got offered a TV show to choose in Australia. There's a state-sanctioned quarantine for two weeks. Like, literally, house arrest for two weeks. No choice of hotel. That's right. No. I'm not going to do that. I'll wait. Um, you really recommend watching Cream Bees. Hey, it's, um, it, what it is, is it's, it's Mean Girls for Old People. If that sounds interesting to you, then watch it. I enjoyed watching it because of the performances to see these people at this age do that work. I mean, it's, it's this cute, silly movie about, you know, old people. I mean, do I recommend watching it? Look at the trailer if that's something you want to spend time doing. It's, it's one of those movies where it's if you just look at the trailer, it's sort of like it's all right there. I mean, it's not like some major piece of art. Two weeks is nothing for ultimate freedom down yonder. I don't give a fuck what's down yonder. Two weeks, yeah, it's nothing, but it's nothing I want to do for two weeks. That's all I'm saying. I'm not putting any broader judgments of it. Do whatever you got to do to stop your fucking virus problem. But I don't need to be part of it. I got vaccinated. I'm not going to go somewhere and act like I didn't for two weeks and be like locked up in a fucking hotel room, you know, with a jar of Vegemite and some mediocre food. Enough with the... I don't know what Bill and Bob Zoom is. Enough with the putting things on watermelon. You can put anything on watermelon. I get it. It's a big, sweet, kind of crispy, mushy thing. And anything you put on watermelon is going to add to that or counteract that. And both of those things are pleasurable. I get it. I don't know anything about it. About two Leslie. I heard some things for a minute, and then I stopped hearing things. All right. Everything's good. Everything's all right. So what did we learn? The vibe at the comedy store is great. A lot of younger, new comics, men and women, doing their new stuff and doing work. People I don't know, I've seen, haven't seen before. It's great, sort of egalitarian. Comedy is not a team sport. Um, if you're looking at things, you know, at any sort of event or business or pastime or hobby as competitive, and that's how you judge things, is who's winning. You're a shallow person. Um, Fahim Anwar is doing some funny shit in my mind. And... Um, I don't need to go to Australia. I don't need any more suggestions for what to put on watermelon. And I hope everything's okay. Mind your mind before they mine your mind. Hey, I'll be right out. Megan's here. And I'm talking to uh, Quentin in a few hours. Buddha face.